from dynasties. Then as you move upward, uh, the one of the women here uh, at the top uh, holding something red rolled up and a servant b b beside her are waiting for something to happen, somebody to come through the gate. Preparations are being made. And then up above, up above, here this one, you see another scene. Now, Hearn, Maxwell or Mike Hearn, uh, argues, I think quite persuasively, I'm convinced, that what is represented is a scene of calling the favorite in which, in the middle of the night or the night, uh, the emperor decides he wants one of his favorites to come to his bed, or maybe in this case to go to a banquet with him to have some uh, what's prepared below. And she is being called, and maybe the servant here at the left is going to her chamber to call her and the other is waiting. This is a, a very good conjecture, probably right, or maybe there's an old source that Hearn found that says this. Uh, I'm, I'm quite ready to credit it anyway. Uh, I will go, talk a bit about the subject and other versions of it as we go on. But for now, let me just say that this again is another painting in which you have paintings within paintings, and they are set into the wall, panels in the wall. Very interesting evidence, presumably, for how paintings were used to decorate uh, rooms in early times. Uh, and uh, the paintings are again in uh, Southern Song ink monochrome style, I think Southern Song, roughly. I'm not sure about that, but it's something like that. Uh, so the whole painting is done in color, but then when you move into the paintings within the paintings, they are done in a quite different style, ink monochrome. The next, please. Yeah, here is a close-up of several of them. Um, uh, as if Now, sometimes we will see hanging scroll compositions, which were probably used this way. And in other words, when they were taken off the wall and mounted as hanging scrolls, which of course is the only way they can be preserved, uh, they often look incomplete. And I'll show several paintings later that's a, that are of that type. And we'll say it may have been part of a series or of a screen or something. And uh, we know from records also that landscapes by great masters are often in a series of six or more, a dozen or whatever, uh, panels. Okay, next please. And here's still another further to the right of that with the uh, panels set in. So this is another painting where the actual date of the copy seems to be revealed by the um, by the paintings within the paintings. <clears throat> okay, now uh, Hearn, as I say, identifies this subject as um, uh, summoning the favorite, uh, the favorite concubine. Um, and I think this piece seems quite right to me. Um, now, I remember when, he, when they acquired this, I said to him, we were, I was living at that time, I think, at Princeton, and we talked anyway. I remember telling him that if he wanted to acquire the other two versions of this subject that were known to me, that they were both in New York as it happened. One of them, which we'll see in a minute, was an album leaf about to be auctioned at one of the big auction houses there. And uh, the Met could have bought it if they wanted I don't know who got it, but it is a very fine southern song album leaf. And the other, which is also owned by the same Oscar Tong, was a painting by an 18th century artist named Yuan Zhang. So I, um, I want to go off here on one of my side tracks, as I will call them, uh, talking about the subject, the uh, uh, calling the, the, the um, palace favorite. Okay, next please. Here is a uh, fan-shaped album leaf that is mounted originally on a flat fan with radiating uh, what bamboo, split bamboo uh, spines uh, holding, it, uh, holding it out. Anyway, all that I'll show one sometime. And um, they're, they're taken off the fan eventually and mounted as album leaves for preservation. This is anyway a fan-shaped leaf, whether it was actually ever used as a fan is a question. But as you see, it, it shows buildings, buildings in the palace compound, and in the upper left, a group of palace ladies, southern sun ladies, uh, slim and looking, and you know, I won't make the point, but they were sort of like the ladies in the Gu Hong Chung painting. And they are holding musical instruments, and they're ready to accompany this palace favorite when she comes to, when she goes to, to join the emperor. Down below at the right, uh, you look through the window of the palace building, small palace building, you see her in bed, and she is being roused by a palace lady and told, okay, your time has come, come with me. And then another lady at the window to the, just to the left of that, 
leaning out and speaking to a girl servant who is over here by a flowering bush, picking flowers uh, the, which they will carry and which the, uh, the favorite concubine will put in her hair. So, very lovely uh, little picture with a, the same kind of narrative behind it um, from the probably 12th century academy, something like that, so, so 12th century academy style. Now the other one, which I want to show and speak about, and this I say is a sidetrack really, but just to show, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show a certain kind of composition where you have to really pay attention to what's going on in the picture. Now, Maxwell Hearn very definitely did when he came up with the subject for the painting, the main painting we're talking about. Uh, but in other cases, people look at paintings like this one and say, beautiful painting by Yuan Zhang, but don't bother to see what's happening in it. Okay, this is a painting by an artist named Yuan Zhang, a uh, Qing Dynasty artist working in Yangzhou, and it's dated 1693, which means it's a fairly early work of Yuan Zhang. He was active into the 1730s, 40s, something like that. Anyway, it's owned, as I say, by the same Oscar Tang. I had it photographed recently for a book that I'm uh, publishing in a short time. Um, actually, it was owned by a Hong Kong collector dealer named Wang Nanping, and I had every chance to buy it, and I didn't. I kicked myself for that. Wonderful painting. But anyway, it will be owned by the Met, presumably. Okay, here's the whole painting. Now we can look at this, and we say, all right, a palace by a lake in the evening. The sky indicates evening. A, a band of fog drifting across a lake, and then on the far side of the lake, what seems to be another palace building behind a wall, and then on the upper left, some kind of something going on with a boat. Okay, very interesting. Then we go on to the next painting. If you don't do that, if you start really looking, then you start finding the, the what really is happening, and that's what I want to do. I like Grand Zhang very much, and often in his paintings you have stories, uh, things that are happening, and if you look hard, you find them. Now here are the palace closer up, the near the foreground palace, the lake, and some ducks over on the right, over on the right side. And you see that there are lights in the palace. It's night, but somehow people are holding lanterns. So something is going on. A uh, very beautiful architectural drawing. As you move closer in, next please, you see two servants in a doorway, uh, one of them holding a lamp, and then another lamp and another window further down to the left here. Uh, by the way, the drawing, the extraordinary architectural drawing of all the bracketing under the eaves and all the railings and, oh my goodness, everything. Well, the next please. Architectural drawing is really quite fine. Uh, he is remarkable. He's an artist who is kind of scorned as low class and hardworking and old fashioned. He imitated Sung styles and so on. So he's way out of fashion with what's going on in Yangzhou. And what you're supposed to be admiring and looking at are paintings of bamboo and orchids by, anyway, never mind. Um, the eight uh, so called in Yangzhou strange masters. But Yuan Zhang is actually a much more interesting painter than people think. And uh, notice here, by the way, in the, these panels that make up the, uh, the um, uh, kind of, well, going along the, the, ballast, uh, the, the, the corridor here, are, on um, the lower part, are set little uh, slabs of stone uh, with natural marble markings. Let me go on to show two actual examples, both in the Nelson Gallery in Kansas City, bought by Larry Sickman, who had a special fondness for objects of this kind, as I've said many times. These are slabs of real marble, selected and ground so that the natural markings look like images of landscapes, mountains, sometimes clouds, and tree groves. Next, please. Here is a detail of uh, the round example showing, uh, in the light reflection, showing how the darker markings have a grainy texture. Um, they come from South China. Dali is the old name for Yunnan and they are commonly used in Chinese furniture and architecture. Now I'll show a series of images of paintings, all illustrations to my recent book, Pictures for Use and Pleasure, so I won't identify them. You can find them all there, and this can serve as an advertisement for my book. Okay, next. Two paintings of beautiful women, late 17th century and 18th century in date, in which the Dolly Shure panels are set into the backs of chairs. In the one at left, a slab of it is also set into the tabletop under the Wei Qi game board. Next. Two more, both 18th century, in which horizontal slabs 
are set into the backs of, of bed chairs. Uh, they were represented in the paintings as indications of the affluence and the good taste of the users. Next. One more early 18th century, in which the stone slab is again set into the tabletop. And finally, next, two examples, both from the 18th century paintings, in which slabs of dolly sure are set into the lower panels of doors opening onto the outside from outside hallways and porches. These are similar to the use of the stones in the Yuan Jiang painting. Now back to that. Uh, and uh, the light is because the servants are roused and they're, they're doing something. They've roused their, uh, one of their number has been taken off. And then if you move across the uh, lake to the other side, you see what is happening. Uh, as the boat is drawn up here next side and uh, people are getting out and going up these marble steps, the palace and about to make their way along the corridor uh, to the right, up and to the right to the pal next palace which is where the emperor is waiting. The next place, and here up close, mm, the drawing is really beautiful. Uh, Yuan Zhang draws these things so he could virtually reconstruct the boat. It's a dragon boat, such as they uh, apparently you must have used in the palace, with lanterns on it and other lanterns held by servants and uh, attendants, eunuchs, attending her. No none but eunuchs are allowed in the women's quarters. And one of them is, well, they're carrying various things anyway, her musical instrument maybe. And she herself uh, held up by two girl servants. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So this is what happens when you look at the painting, for goodness sakes. Look into it, instead of just saying, hmm, no. Um, another Yuan Zhang. Okay, that, uh, this, by the way, is another example of something I'm going to be showing and talking about in connection with 10th century painting, which is uh, a kind of attitude or a kind of uh, approach of the more you look, the more you find, putting all kinds of hidden things in the paintings to be discovered by by, uh, whatever, by uh, viewers. Okay, then we go on to see another painting, which is very probably from the Five Dynasties period and from the Southern Tang Court, which I've been talk about, talking about, the court of Li Hoju. This is a famous hand scroll painting, uh, ink and light colors on silk, sometimes heavier colors, mostly light colors, uh, titled Early Snow on the River. And it's uh, very probably really by, I can say in this case, an artist named Zhao Gan. Zhao Gan um, reproduced in lots of books in the Palace Museum in Taipei, National Palace Museum in Taipei. Um, and as I say, it's a very famous scroll. At the very beginning of the scroll, there's a title by probably by an early emperor. Anyway, there's the scroll has a wonderful pedigree. It it's, uh, represents uh, fishermen on the river. Uh, it's not signed, but uh, there are very early things re uh, crediting it to him. Uh, I reproduced a section of it I'll talk about in uh, my old Skira book, and I quoted a writer of the early 12th century catalog, the Shren He Huapu, who writes this, quote, Even though you may be among all the petty distractions of court or marketplace, you have only to look at it to be transported at once to the river, end quote. He's talking about a Zhou Gan painting, maybe this painting. That is to say, it's an evocative painting, a painting that makes you feel as if you were there, that tells you what you would see when, if you were there. Now, way, way back when we talked about Sung Bing's essay, we talked about the painting that separates, excuse me, substitutes for the real thing and supplies you with the visual experiences you would have or something very like them if you were really there, and paintings that make you feel cold because they are wintry and make you shiver and so on. Well, that's what this is, an extremely evocative, extremely informative painting. That is to say, we learn a lot about the lives of fishermen on the river in winter from looking at this painting. In the first section, uh, we see across the river some fishermen and reeds and so on, and a big uh, seal at the lower right, which is an important, anyway, seal. Then in the next section, next please, um, a fishing boat in the upper left and reeds, old trees, uh, trees showing the effect of winter, by the way. The trees are, the leafy trees are bare for the most part, or almost bare, and so on. 